Fox Valley in Focus. I'm your host, Barb Nadeau, and I'm thrilled to be here today to talk about two great community events and some valuable information for families and caregivers. Our guests today are Roger Prinville for Taste of Sandwich, Nora Hickey for Oktoberfest in Plano, and Anna Mejia for Senior Services Associates Incorporated. We'll be started in just a second. Hang on. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Roger Prinville is our first guest today. Roger's here for Taste of Sandwich, and thank you so much for being here on our show. Glad to be here. I wanted to talk to you today because of the great tradition the Taste of Sandwich has. How many years has it been going? This is the 27th year. That's amazing to have an event in the center of a town, a little town like Sandwich, Illinois, and have it be successful year after year. You must have great volunteers and you must have a great thing going. We do, been, been going well for a long time. Run, uh, used to be run by the Sandwich Association of Merchants, but that group has recently disbanded. Now it's gonna be taken over by the Sandwich Tourism Group. Well, that's really wonderful to know. And I know that you have a, a, a big top tent that you have. Two and, tents. Oh, really? Okay, so how many vendors do you get? We should get about 40. I, I had to admit to you before the show that it's been a couple years since I've been there. So can you tell us a little bit more about how the Taste of Sandwich uh, progresses, how, how it starts? Do we have to pay admission? Tell us all about it. It's $7 admission, and you can pick the, the tickets up at Prendy's Antique Mall right there either ahead of time a few days or right at the time of the event, either way. Okay, so go into Prindy's Antiques, uh, pay your $7. The $7 uh, gives you tickets to spend? You get a, a ticket with a punch out or mark off squares for each vendor that will be there either under the tent or in front of their business along railroad or Main Street. The so businesses I... that par participate right there just do it in front of their shop. Like Prindy's will have it in front of their shop and Old Time Man across the street will be out in front of their uh, their place of business and those that are a little further away and that doesn't work out for they'll rent space in the taste in the tent rather for the taste okay for the and taste in the tent <laughs> <laughs> um 40 vendors for a taste i i don't think i can eat that much <laughs> but you can actually stop at each one you stop by each one uh the food products will range from pulled pork sandwiches to hot dogs to chili to warm apple crisps, those items we have every year. Uh, a lot of the vendors will do just snack items, candy, potato chips, fudge. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get a few more mainline food items this year. And what happened with the event, two years ago, the, uh, the Kelb County Health Department got involved and made it a little more difficult to cook because you have to cook uh, Technically, you have to cook in a licensed kitchen. And people found that difficult to arrange. Although we could provide the kitchens, they really didn't want to do it. They'd rather just cook at home. Mm -hmm. So what we've done this year, we've talked to a couple of caterers in the area. Uh, in particular, uh, Kathy from Country Girls is going to put together a little menu that the vendors can purchase from her to give out at the taste. Oh, so they because can... Because she's got a licensed kitchen, of course. So they that can actually contract with her to cook their their precious family memory or what it, recipe, whatever, and and say this is what we want to offer. But she will she will be. I able think to work it worked the other way around. She'll put together a list of things that she can offer at a reasonable price, and you pick from those. And this is interesting because when you say taste of sandwich, it's not just restaurants that are participating. Oh, you no. have insurance agents, you have uh, all sorts of lawyers, all sorts of businesses. It's a great opportunity for anybody to get their name out in front of the people, give back to the community. And for new businesses in particular, they get to see who you are. You can give them a little handout, tell them a little bit about your business. Mm -hmm. It just it works out well for everybody all around. That's awesome. So you have room for 40. Are they all booked? Roughly 40. Are you all booked or do you still have time to We're register? We're about halfway there. So if they want more information about how to become a vendor, uh, how do they do that? 
contact me, Roger Prindeville. Uh, you can go to my email address, rogerprin at comcast.net, or call me at 630-688-7124. Okay, and you'll And I'll get an application out to them. And that uh, they can tell me where they want to be in front of their business or in the tent. We are charging $20 for the tent this year. You get a space probably 10 by 15. That will vary a little bit depending on how many people uh, take part. Mm -hmm. That's awesome that we can still sign up to be part of it. And I know when you uh, have been doing this traditionally, the whole idea was it was not just those downtown vendors. So you actually have, or downtown biz businesses that become vendors, you actually had people from outside of, of Sandwich, from all areas of Sandwich, and even surrounding businesses that work with Sandwich folk that want to be we'll part of We'll get a few this. from surrounding towns even. That's which wonderful. Which is why I let people know where they are. Now, before the show, you said that something else was happening with that uh, downtown area in conjunction with your taste this year. Oh, you mean the craft show? Well, you have a craft show. I know oh, that. Oh, the car show. The car show. Yeah, the car show is the same night. That's just a block down. Railroad Street is shut down for three blocks there. And we're at the West End right by Main Street. The car show is a couple blocks down. Now and that's such a great event in itself. And you're not in charge of the car show, though. No. But I've noticed that uh, the city's had several of them already this summer. Yeah, the Lions Club, I think, puts on most of them. They do the one uh, same night as, as the Taste. That's nice because it's going to bring in extra, um, extra people who may not even realize the Taste is going on. This could be the biggest Taste ever. <laughs> could be. Could I, be. I hope so. The main thing is we're going to have to have more, more food items rather than snack items than we have the last two years. Some of the, the guests have been a little disappointed. You know, you can only eat so much popcorn or potato chips. Mm -hmm. They want to see a little more substantial food, and we will be providing that this year. Okay, so that's a challenge to everybody watching this show to make sure that they uh, get in touch with you and get a copy of this application. Uh, thank you for right. giving me a copy of this application, and this is all they really need to get um, signed up and ready. And, Correct. And I know you've got a lot of good advice. You've been involved in this from the beginning, haven't you? Oh, no, no. I, I've been involved for, well, Leo from uh, Leo's Trophies ran it for many, many years. And when he retired, um, I took it over. Uh, last year, uh, Sharon Maru and Rhonda France from the Sandwich Area Merchants did it last year. I'm taking it back this year. Next year, it'll probably be the chamber or, or someone else. Mm -hmm. But we'll just keep it in the family. That's good. And networking amongst each other, and that's, that's what makes a strong business community. And, and you know, it's interesting because Sandwich has its own atmosphere. You know, uh, you have it does. Very unique. so many interesting niche businesses that are totally unique to Sandwich. You've got so many antiques and you have so many other things that kind of complement each other that, uh, you know, when you come to downtown Sandwich and you come to an event like this, you're really kind of stepping into a magical place. <laughs> I don't know how That's else true. to explain well put, it, yeah. but it, it, it really is true. And it's been a benefit to have that taste um, on Wednesday at the end of September because, as you mentioned a, a few mo moments ago, the uh, crafts show will be going on on the following day. Right. That's Thursday. Now, I shall also should mention that we're going to keep the tents over the weekend because it doesn't cost any more. So if anyone wanted to have an event and take advantage of those tents, we can work that out. There you have it. How, how about that for being open for business in Sandwich, <laughs> Illinois? Roger, thank you so much for all this information. And we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back right after this. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Hickey joins us now. Nora is here to talk about Oktoberfest in Plano. Thanks for coming. And this is a brand new event from what I understand. Yes, it is. So I'm excited to be here. So tell me, how did this idea come about? 
Sure, so what we've been trying to do with St. Mary's School in Plano is really be more community focused. Um, so last year we started doing a couple more community events. We had a trunk or treat. We also did an egg hunt that was very successful. So this year what we want to do is really be out in the community and have an Oktoberfest at the end of September. So uh, what is going to happen at Oktoberfest? So Oktoberfest is just going to be an all-day outdoor festival, so to speak. We're going to have food all day that's available for purchase. We're going to have a beer garden where you can get beer and wine. And then we also have a lineup of several bands. And we're really excited to close the night with Whiskey Romance. So we hope everyone can come out. Um, and this is going to be anyone can come out for no cost. So whether you just want to hang out, get some food with your family, um, there will be games for kids to play. It will just be a really nice time to get together and have some fellowship. And this is something you've never done before. Correct. <laughs> and I understand you're, you're a parent over at St. Mary's School. Yes. And so uh, I know the parents together are always working on you know mm -hmm. what they can do to promote the school. Uh, the, you bit off a big project, Nora. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I did, but I'm excited because I think it's really important to be a part of our community. There's so much to give back. Um, we're very fortunate and we need a lot of help from our community, so we want to make sure that we're giving back to them as well. One of the things about St. Mary's that I, I didn't realize uh, right away, but it's one of the only uh, private schools, definitely the only Catholic school in the county and Correct. actually in the, in like, kind of a three county area. Yes, we are. So we do pull from not only Kendall County, but some of the surrounding counties. Um, you know, it's a great school. We've been there, I wanna say um, it was six years last year. And we really rely again on the community for our mm -hmm. fundraising and to support the school because as a private school, we don't get funding from the state. And, you know, having community events, like you said, uh, your egg hunt and mm -hmm. your, and your um, uh, your Halloween event um, opens you up to the community, but with the Oktoberfest, you're actually not even on school grounds. You're coming right down into the center of Plano. Yes, we're excited to be in downtown Plano because again, Plano is our community and we want really everyone to come out and have a great time um, and just you know enjoy themselves. It's gonna be the start to fall, so hopefully we can everyone get in the mood and have mm -hmm. a great afternoon. It, uh, where's it going to be located? Sure, so it's going to be in downtown Plano, actually right next to the Plano Police Station and right across from the Throat Park, or people might call the Purple Park. Okay, so uh, in that grassy area, mm -hmm. you're going to fill that with kids games, you said, beer garden, and and tell me more about the So we'll the have food, we're going to have bands, we have bands all day. Um, so we're excited about that live entertainment. Um, we're going to have um, bag games, other games that people can you know do just to kind of pass the time. So it's something where if you want to come down with your kids, it's a safe place to just hang out because I know I have children. So I like to when I go somewhere, I like to know that they're going to be entertained and I'm going to be entertained. And uh, you're actually going to have like as you said games entertainment beer garden do i have to pay to enter it are you going to have a gate how does this work so anyone can come down and check out the Oktoberfest. there's not going to be any type of entrance fee or anything of that nature um, of course we want to support our school but what we'd like to do is have people buy food buy drinks and again just enjoy themselves okay and then the entertainment's going to be free so if you mm -hmm. hear the band playing you can come on absolutely come on over and enjoy it yes that's wonderful yes. um this is something that uh, is going to support the school. It's going to give awareness to the school. Mm -hmm. uh, but are you using the funds for something special? So what we need every year, we do have a fundraising goal that we have to meet. And to be honest, it really just helps keep the school open every year. We do need to do some upgrades to the school. So this will help with that initiative. But as I mentioned, we don't get funding from the county or the state like other schools do. So we really rely on our community in order to be able to allow our children to attend St. Mary's. Okay. And that's wonderful. You're a good addition to the, the community for sure. Um, you were telling me before the show that mm -hmm. you also have some other events coming up. Yeah, so again this year we'll also do our trunk or treat. We're going to have our egg hunt. Again, really want to be out in the community. But another thing that St. Mary's does that I don't think a lot of people realize is we um, partner with the Kendall County Food Bank and we also partner with the local school district to offer a mobile food pantry that is again free to everybody. Um, and we do it on the third, third, excuse me, third Friday of every month at PH Miller in Plano. And there's no requirements and a lot of people don't realize um, the way the, 
I guess, food system works in this area. But what's nice is this is open to anybody, whether you live in Plano, Yorkville, Aurora, anyone can attend this food pantry. And anytime you need it, we're there for you. And I think it's a great program for our community. Absolutely. You know, there's so many people that don't know how, some people know how to get to a pantry. Some people won't even go to a pantry, but they need it. Yes. And I think the fact that, you know, the pantry is in, in the south end of Yorkville. Um, you're on the north end of Plano. Yes. You're getting people who may not have access. Correct. And what's different with our food pantry is when you go to the Kendall County Food Pantry, you do have to register and there's certain things you have to do. And I think you're right that some people aren't comfortable doing that. However, with our food pantry, if you don't want to give us any information, you don't have to. So if it's, you know, just it's there for you when you need it. And I think it's so important. And we actually encourage people to come to the food pantry because the more people we have, the more food we'll get so we can provide it to people who need it. Okay. And you said that's the third Friday, Friday of every month. Mm -hmm. And where is that located? It's at P.H. Miller School in Plano, which is off of Lou Street. And so um, St. Mary's School is just a few blocks away, mm -hmm. but you were actually all going over to the to P.H. Miller lot yes. and volunteering there. It's great to have that collaboration between the two school communities yes. as well. Um, you had mentioned, um, uh, you know, other community events. You're going to have a busy fall. If you're doing this every week, or every month on the third week you're having a food pantry then the fourth week in September you're having this huge Oktoberfest and then turning right around for a Halloween event and, and <laughs> continuing on. Yes. You're going to be a very busy girl. It's, that's okay. I like to be busy and again to me community is so important. Without our community I mean what do we have? Mm -hmm. um, tell me how many students do you know? How many students are at St. Mary's? Yes, we have um, about 187 students, which mm -hmm. is comprised of about 113 families. Um, and what's nice is we have students, again, from all over the area. And we also have grades K through 8. And we do a full day kindergarten, which is really exciting for parents. Um, and it's a great, it's a great school. Our, on average, our teachers have been there over 10 years. It's just a great place to be. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a great opportunity, too, to, because you're bringing people in from so many different communities just mm -hmm. to the school. So you're going to have that many more people coming to the center of Plano. I think the city of Plano better get ready because yeah. I think Oktoberfest is going to be a great success, having all those folks come together and celebrate fall, yes. uh, Oktoberfest, yes. in the center of Plano. And uh, just from talking to you, I know you're very excited about the, the entertainment lineup that you yes. have. And I don't think we've had a country band like Whiskey Romance performing in an outdoor venue in Plano for uh, as long as I can remember. So that's going to be a great addition as well. So yes, we're so excited. Yeah. Now, where can we learn more about this? So if you have um, more questions or information, I would say definitely go to the St. Mary's website and then um, always contact the school and we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, so we could go to the website, find out more, find out more about the event or just come. Yeah. You want people to come. Exactly. Okay. Just check it out. Oktoberfest is going to be Saturday the 28th, mm -hmm. September 28th, and that's going to be from... That will run from noon until 10 o'clock. Thank you so much, Nora, for sharing this with us. Well, thanks for having me. Okay, we'll have one more guest coming up right after this. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Anna Mejia joins us now. She's the Associate Director of Senior Services Associates, and that's of Kane, Kendall, and McHenry Counties. Anna, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. That is a huge service area, mm -hmm. and that is a lot of different communities, from very urban communities like Elgin and Aurora to very remote communities like Newark and Pingree Grove, and how do you do your job? <laughs> 
Well, we depend on a lot of people, a lot of people with good heart that are really interested in helping the community, helping the aging population. Uh, we also serve the people that have disabilities, um, 19 to 59 year olds. It's amazing to me how many different services are offered and is it okay to ask you if you could tell us some of those services because I think Senior Services Associates is pretty much the most complex and complete senior services um, I've ever seen. That is correct. We like to think of ourselves as a one-stop shop for anything that any person age uh, 60 and over can need or look for. So when people are reaching the age of 60, they're encouraged to give us a call and they can come and talk to one of inf our information and assistance specialists that can help them with any of their concerns from financial stability once they reach 60 to where they're going to get enough money for food, housing, um, assistance navigating through their Medicare once they turn 65 or any other health related issues. So that's our first step. When people call the office, they talk to information and assistance. We also have care coordination where uh, we can assist them to coordinate their care. We do a thorough assessment that takes about two hours in the home, so it's very thorough. We look at all areas of their life, and wherever there is a need or a gap to be filled, we can assist them to find the resources or to get them the assistance that they need. We also have ombudsman programs, and the ombudsman program helps individuals that are in nursing home facilities or assisted living facilities a supportive living facility, so they advocate for the people there. So if they don't like the, the color of their jello, they can <laughs> complain and we can help them get the jello that they want. Or if there are any issues or concerns, concerns that they have about their treatment, unfairness, um, that's what the advocate does. And then for people in the community that also need an advocate, we have our Adult Protective Services Program that helps people that are 19 to 59 with a disability or over the age of 60 that have any kind of mis misuse, any kind of abuse. It could be financial exploitation, it could be emotional, or it could be physical. So we urge anybody out there to give us a call and tell us if they are just worried about their neighbor that they haven't seen in a few days, you know, due to either self-neglect mm -hmm. or they're just worried, they give us a call and we can send out an investigator to make sure that they're okay and to get them what they need. Now recently we've had a lot more need for uh, funding to help people even just to get meals. Um, we had a case of a, of a lady that had uh, gluten um, allergies. Um, she couldn't eat other like dairy products and you know being on a special diet is very expensive so we were able to p help her purchase a gift card to Aldi or Walmart you know any of the areas that she can buy fresh fruit or produce to help get her through these difficult times so we also have those services that are gap filling services or respite that can provide respite relief to caregivers or they can even buy a stove if their stove broke or a refrigerator mm -hmm. a walker canes, so any kind of assistance. That is limited to one time per year, and we're getting down to the end of the, fun, of the funds. So, you know, we do depend a lot on donations. Whew, that is a lot. That is it, a lot. It really is. So basically, for a senior, someone who turns 60 and up, and definitely before they turn 65, that individual is coming in mm -hmm. and finding out what's going on and what they need. And, and some of these, you know, definitions and, you know, programs are so confusing. And so you're really helping the senior themselves. But so many of these other programs you talked about, care coordination and ombudsman, you're, you're oftentimes getting the family members, the loved ones, the mm -hmm. caregivers involved that are calling you and saying, I need answers. Where do I go? You're absolutely correct, and we have more services that, that are available. We have a caregiver counseling program, so we have a counselor that can assist caregivers that may be burnt out, that they take care of their kids and their parents, and they don't know where to go, they can come and talk to our counselor. That is completely free of charge. We also have um, activities. We have an activity program and an activity center in five offices. We have activity directors that run anything from bingo, which was what our <laughs> previous generations like, to now the new generations that like, uh, new generations of seniors that are more active and like to go on trips or like to visit places they've never seen before. They like to go on lunch trips or they like to um, do activities, exercise. We're about to open our new senior center, um, hopefully by the end of the year in Aurora. 
and we are going to have a lot more activities that they can participate in. So we're looking for donations of even gently used items such as a pool table, maybe a ski ball set, ping pong table, card sets. So we're looking for all those things. Uh, also, maybe electric bikes or treadmills that can help the seniors be more active in the community. Anything we can do to help and make it fun for them. It is amazing because when you talk about the generations of seniors, you got your 60s, your 70s, your 80s, your 90s, and now mm -hmm. your 100-sums, and they're all just as active in different ways. Yep. You really have to be ready for whatever the need is, and exactly. it is pretty amazing what you're doing. Yes, exactly. Before we run out of time today, I want to ask you, because you've said there's so many ways we can help, but you have some special events coming up, and if you could tell us a little bit more about it. I know you've got a celebrity bartender thing coming up, and then you've also got your big pie auction coming up in the fall. Yes, that is correct. We have, uh, it's something new that was uh, just created in 2016. They're called Jazz Trials, and that takes place at the law office in Yorkville. It's at 226 South Bridge Street. And once a month, they host celebrity bartenders, which are staff from different non-for-profits that come to bartend the event. We will be there on October 31st on Halloween. So we ask people to come out and support senior services. All the tips that are uh, gathered that night will go towards senior services. And come out in your costumes. Come out and have fun. The event runs from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. So if you have nowhere to go for Halloween, come out and celebrate and just have some fun and support senior services. Our, uh, this will be our 15th annual pie auction that takes place on November 22nd. That will be in Aurora at Piper Banquets. And 15th annual makes it a little bit special. So come and try some of our delicious pies. Uh, we're going to have a sit, uh, it's going to be a sit down buffet style meal. Uh, that will only be $50, and that includes three hours of beer and wine. So it's a very good deal for, you know, a good price. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great dinner always. Uh, it's a great evening, and I've never seen so many people have so much fun with pie. I mean, you yeah. really, just, <laughs> it doesn't sound, you, you can't even describe it. Yeah, and just to throw this out there, we usually have uh, the, a fire department that comes out, and the firefighters showcase the pies. This year, we're trying to also get the Aurora SWAT team to come out and help showcase the pies. So hopefully they'll be a available that night. Okay, that'll yeah. be a lot of fun. And yeah. like uh, you said, come just come enjoy pie. You've got little pies, you've got big pies, you've got extravagant pies, and you yes. have a lot of other goodies mm -hmm. as well. So it's a, it's quite an event. It, yes, it is. That's yeah. That's awesome. Senior Services Associates, as I said, is in three counties. You said you have five offices. Mm -hmm. Here locally, you're in the city of Yorkville. Yes, we are at the Beecher Center, 908 Game Farm Road, um, and we are open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And for our viewers who are up in uh, the North Aurora, Aurora area, uh, you have a you have an office there as well? Yes, we have an office at 2111 Plum Street. We are currently on the second floor, but we're looking to move down to the first floor, uh, and that should be in the next few months. We also have an office in Elgin and, and an office in Crystal Lake and McHenry. Uh, amazing. It, it's amazing, everything you do, and I want to thank you so much for telling us about it. I'm excited yeah. about your events coming up, and I just want to thank you for being with That's us on great. the show. great. Thank you for having us. We always want to give out all the information that we can to help the community. <laughs> so. Well, that does it for our show today. I want to thank you for being with us and for uh, all of Fox Valley Television. I'm just glad to be here uh, with you today.